and knocked it out of the park. I believe it. I believe it. I told I everyone in my family, we were all cheering and crying at the same time because he's growing up and he's going to be bar mitzvahed. Um, this is, yeah, well, this is cl classic, classic stuff, Lise. You know, all these things to be, all that sunrise, sunset stuff, you know? Yeah. Very much, very much a part of it. All right. <laughs> so let me just make sure we're streaming properly here. Okay. We got... I have, this is what I have. Okay, good. Streaming is working. Everybody can hear us okay? Everybody can hear Lauren okay? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, a Merry Shabbos to everybody. A very Merry Shabbos. Okay. Merry Shabbos. Merry Shabbos. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute everybody for now. We'll unmute at the at the end here, so forgive okay. me. All right. And uh, But Lauren, you should still be able to unmute. Yeah. Hey, there we are. So, you know, uh, uh, all joking aside, there is something very sort of oddly comfortable about this right laura and i were just talking about it. it's it's sort of what i envision all those months that we were doing you know zoom stuff that there would come a point in time in which we would have a nostalgia for it you know and we would start to have like nostalgia zoom shabbats just for the sake of doing it now obviously this time uh combination of factors we actually would have been virtual this week regardless uh because of course our wonderful hosts at the whalers church kind of need the church for tonight and tomorrow there's some important things going on in their world so you know, uh, we figured this was a good move. But uh, I think also, as we know, with the growing uh, COVID reality, that it also is a prudent thing for us to be doing this in this space. So let us be thankful again. I still think there needs to be a bracha for, you know, technology in moments like this, because, you know, boy, it really is is quite amazing. But it also is just so nice to see all of your faces. You know, it's it's something that actually I have missed a lot. So I'm going to just open it on the gallery just so that I can see everybody wave to everybody and uh, and wish you all a, a really a Shabbat Shalom. And, uh, you know, for those celebrating in other fashions, uh, you know, and to our friends at the Whalers Church, which I think is really important, we wish them a Merry Christmas. And, you know, one of the things that really has struck me is, um, you know, how much I really have appreciated, and I think all of us have appreciated the way we've been welcomed into uh, that other space. And certainly I think we can't take for granted that, you know, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, 100 years ago, it would have been almost impossible to imagine, right, that the local synagogue would spend a year, you know, uh, really, again, lovingly embraced by one of the local churches to be able to share that space. So in an odd way, I feel strange not to be in the sanctuary there tonight. But in other ways, like I said, we're in our virtual sanctuary and it is a real treat. So, uh, you know, make yourselves comfortable. Those that are watching on the stream, we hope you're comfortable as well. Uh, and Cantor Lauren, I think we're going to start with you and Candle Blessings, which can be found on page 120. Uh, and we're, I'm going to drop my video out for the parts where Lauren is there. I'll swap us back and forth. That way we, we can focus. You don't need to see my increasingly bald head, I think, for the rest of the So, Lauren, it's all you. I'll be here in, in voice and backups. Okay. <laughs> See, dutifully right there, <laughs> as a fiance should, ready to carry the candles away. And uh, we'll give Cantor Laura a second to get her guitar ready. And uh, I think we're going to start uh, with uh, 128, you did Nefesh? Yes. Okay.
are now to page 130. Let's hurry. Nekan mafanav betoda bit miro
turn now to page 135, Romamu, which is uh, right at the bottom of the page in Hebrew, middle of the page in the Hebrew part. Again, the first, second, fifth, and ninth paragraphs. <laughs> Oh, 
Di katanani frach, keres balvanon yisne. Shetuli mevita donai, bechatorot elohinu yaferichu. Oh, yinu vum seva, desheni varanani miu. Lagid ki ashar donai, suri. Me love not We'll turn now to page 144 for the Chatsi Kaddish. Yit kadal, yit kadal shemir haba Pel madiv rachirute v'yam lichmal chute Bechay echon uv yom echon Uv chayi dechol ben Yisrael Pagala, pagala who this man carib, ve imeru amen, ye heshmera mame varach, le alam al me al maya, eat marach, eat parach me ishabach, vit pa aridrama me inase, vit adam, vit alem, vit alal, shemele kure shaberi hu, le lam in komer gata vishirata. Tush pecha ta venechem ata ta hamiran be alma vehimeru amen. We'll turn now to page 146 for the barfu. Am I awake? Am I prepared? Are you listening? Page 148. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who speaks the evening into being, skillfully opens the gates, thoughtfully alters the time and changes the seasons, and arranges the stars in their heavenly courses according to plan. You are creator of day and night, rolling light away from darkness and darkness from light, transforming day into night and distinguishing one from the other. Adonai Tzvaot is your name. Ever living God, may you reign continually over us into eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on evening. <laughs> Elchai vekayam, tamidim lachalenu leolam aher, baruch ataronai, hamari varavim. Ahavat olam neit Yisrael,
מאהבתך, אל תסיר ממנו לעולמים, ברוך אתה אדוני, אוהב עמו ישראל. שמע ישראל, אדוני אלוהינו, אדוני אחד. Please join me on page 154. והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצווך היום על לבבך ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם ושבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ושוכבך ופקומך וקשרתם לאות הידיך והיו לתותפות בין עיניך וכתבתם המזוזות ביתך ובהישעריך. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי ואיתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיהם אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם Adonai Eloechem Emet. Let's read together on the top of page 157. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. As we turn it back to Cantor Lauren and we turn to page 158, depending on what the or 160 whatever the cantor decides that's what we're doing Shalom Reinu Lechayim 
You know, the Hachiki Bando was really meant as a lullaby to some degree. I'm feeling very relaxed. I'm not going to fall asleep, but I, I feel <laughs> very relaxed now. So you did, did great. Uh, okay, we're on to Vishamru, page 162. <laughs> on page 164 in our opening for the Amidah and then as always we will continue silently from there uh, please take this time to be meaningful for you and uh, go at your own pace and as always when you're finished if you decide to stand you can be seated if you prefer to stay seated you are welcome to again Cantor will start us off on page 164 and then we'll continue from there silently <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. For those that are still finishing your Amidai, you're welcome to continue. Uh, we'll welcome uh, Cantor Lauren back up to uh, lead us in Osef Shalom, bottom of page 180. <laughs> to offer our Mishaberach, our healing prayer for the evening. Uh, in a minute, I'll read our Mishaberach list, but I'll invite those that are on the Zoom. If you'd like to, you can add names in the chat. Uh, those that are just watching on the stream, you can add names as well in your heart or in your home. Uh, so again, this evening, we'll begin by thinking of Dina Babchana, Bensi Tepper, Cecilia Hirsch, Glenn Tinney, Tzipora Ahava, uh, Gittel Bat Shmuel Vaviva, Bruce Steger, Chana Ruth Batsara, Jeff Baker, David Tasher, Jim Cohn, Monique Renee Banks Rathbun, Lindsay Epstein, Dolores Michka, Sylvia Orn, Yerachmiel Ben Hinda, Paloma Chauhan, Samuel Moskowitz, Chaim Leib, Joyce Weinberg, Rick Gold, Stu Pollock, Jane London, Catherine Guarino, Amuna, uh, Judy Stern, Miriam Cornfield, Roz Brody, Chana Ruth Batsara, Fagel Sipora Bat Elisheva, Elisheva Batsara, Richard Gambino, Michelle Sawicki, Idol Basha Bat Yitzchak, Tzvi Benachem Ben Chaim, Rivka Batavora, Amy and Gavin Tucker, Janice Kurz, David Dowling, Israel Ben Yitzchak, Lorraine Danis, Buddy Kossoff, Shelley Newmark, David Kyle Klopman, Rivka Bat Rachel, Sarah Bat Chana, Moshe Eliezer Ben Tzivya, Peretz Ben Yehuda, Leah Bat Naomi, Gedalia Ben Leah, Justin Banner, Tzipora Ahava Bat Yehudit Rachel, Jane Beard Cass, Amy Cass, Steve Levine, Ira Madras, Ephraim Raphael Ben Esther, and Myra Maslin. And we add those names that have been shared in the chat, and we turn to Cantor Lauren, who will lead us in the Mishaberach, again in the middle of page 371. <laughs> again feels oddly comfortable i was worried you know it'd been so long since we've done a service like this that it was going to be sort of tough but uh i actually think it just feels natural in a weird kind of way so other than the strange you know virtual background of mine hopefully it feels natural to see 
uh, all of you and see me and to be back together in a sort of unique way. And what brings us back together of all things? Christmas, you know? It's just one of those interesting moments in time in which things sort of cross us over. And certainly my drash is not specifically about Christmas tonight, but in thinking about what is actually a very common story in the Jewish world, which is the uh, unique tradition that developed in the United States, really, of course, like most good traditions in Judaism in the United States, beginning in New York City, um, which is the celebration of, of Christmas by Jews uh, by eating Chinese food. Now, this, uh, again, we've talked about before. This is, you know, obviously, right, I say it and we, our immediate response is, understandably, right, we chuckle at it because it is something of an oddity and something of a humorous thing. And the reality is, like most things, uh, it's that. But when you dig a little bit beneath the surface, there's actually some very interesting stuff going on. Uh, so I did a little bit of research, a little bit of thinking beyond just sort of the, the uh, kind of standard version of the story which normally, if I were to ask us, you know, why is it the case, right? Why did this particular thing develop, right? The, and you could put the, this is one of those places where you could participate if you'd like, right? If I ask the question in the chat, you can answer, right? But the most common explanation as to how this tradition developed was that, you know, we're hungry like everybody else. On Christmas, especially in the earlier parts, right, these days, some places still stay open. But, you know, uh, 100 years ago, even 50 years ago, probably 20 years ago, most stores were closed. Most restaurants are closed. Uh, and yet we have no reason to be closed in, right? We want to be out there. We want to be enjoying ourselves, um, right? So we've got Kathy and Jerry have already, you know, stepped in. They've got a, an idea here. So, um, but as uh, Kathy and Jerry point out, there's more to the story. And there's uh, actually a lot of interesting pieces that don't just speak to this particular issue or this particular story, but actually is a little bit about kind of what it has been like for us as Jews to live in diaspora, right? To live outside of our homeland to be in constant interaction with and affected by and affecting of the cultures in which we found ourselves. Um, and certainly this is a story that begins, as I said, in New York City, but really it's emblematic of stories all over the world and all sorts of stories that Jews have experienced and how do we sort of create this, this uh, identity in which we are, you know, celebrating ourselves and certainly focused on ourselves and yet at the same time we are part of a larger culture and we are part of a larger society. So there happens to be a really interesting uh, book, which, of all things, written by a rabbi, Rabbi Joshua Eli Plout. If any of you hear the name Plout and it sounds somewhat familiar, I'm sure that Aaron and Lauren, it probably stands out uh, a lot. Uh, so I believe he is the grandson, maybe the great-grandson, but the grandson of Gunther Plout, Rabbi Gunther Plout, who was responsible for the Plout Chumash that we still use to this day as one of the Chumash uh, that we study Torah from. Uh, and so he wrote a book, uh, which is called A Kosher Christmas, Tis the Season to be Jewish, of which there is a hilarious picture I'm looking at right now of, of Santa Claus walking past a, a Hasidic-looking guy of a very similar build with a very similar beard. And what is the purpose of this book? It's really to explore not just this question of, you know, the tradition of eating Chinese food on Christmas, but really understanding sort of how have Jews in America from our sort of earlier days to today interacted with a holiday which to be very clear and i think this is actually something that's very important to me lest we forget right christmas is a religious holiday and it is a meaningful religious holiday to those who observe it as religious holiday and with religious purpose it also like a lot of things in a society in which the vast majority of people are celebrating a holiday it also has taken on a secular component to it and so as a result of it we have to be very careful about when we sort of cross lines we wouldn't necessarily want Right, people all of a sudden to take Hanukkah and to treat it as something of a secular holiday. Right, we have to understand that there is a religious component to it. But nonetheless, it would be impossible to not identify the fact that Christmas also has become something of a national holiday in America and has been for many, many years. Um, and so the question becomes sort of how does a group such as the, the Jews coming, especially from Europe in the late 1800s, early 1900s. How do they find themselves in relationship to this secular-ish part of the national holiday of Christmas? And how do we find a space for ourselves within it, even while we are sort of on the outside? So this book really explores a number of things that developed uh, over time that became, you know, what well, let's say, you know, traditions of sorts for many families. Uh, long before, you know, you saw the, the sort of rate of, of um, interfaith relationships and mixed uh, families that we see much more commonly today. 
in those the days in the earlier days the late 1800s and 1900s this was really again sort of jewish families trying to figure out sort of how is it they are going to celebrate and be able to you know still go out there into the world on christmas eve so one of the things to point out is pointed out in the book which jerry and kathy beat me to uh in the chat which is the question of why chinese food of all things right to remember that that you know that the that is not the only ethnicity that is not predominantly Christian that lives in this country and that produces delicious food, right? Why didn't we end up in the Indian restaurants, for example, right? Or Thai restaurants or Vietnamese restaurants, right? There are a million other options, but why is it, of course, that we end up in a Chinese restaurant in particular in the beginnings? So there are a couple of reasons. One is geography, which is always important, remembering that the Lower East Side uh, very largely was populated by a Jewish community and a Chinese community, really side by side or in neighboring communities, which still vestiges of exist today, although I think actually in truth, both the Jewish part of the Lower East Side and the Chinese part of the Lower East Side have largely relocated. There are still vestiges of this for sure. But as Kathy and Jerry pointed out, there was also another advantage, which is that Chinese cuisine, American Chinese cuisine, which I should point out, which is not to say that Chinese cuisine, first of all, is monolithic, right? Every region has its specialties. Americanized Chinese food is, is, was designed for us, right? Our palate and, uh, you know, all sorts of things of that nature. But generally speaking, American Chinese food is largely either meat and vegetable, but almost no dairy if dairy exists at all. So the chance of, for example, mixing meat and milk was, if not entirely eliminated, almost exclusively eliminated from possibility. And so I found, it, as it goes, a academic uh, treatise that was written that's called Safe Trafe, New York Jews and Chinese Food, written by Gay Tuckman and Harry Levine, who are professors, I think, at the University of Connecticut, and I believe one of the city of New York universities as well, in which they explore this sort of element of things, and they go much deeper in that sense. And what they're referring to is this idea that, you know, for Jews who are coming again from traditional backgrounds in Europe, who find themselves in the United States, who still at home have an observant kosher household, right? Two sets of dishes, only kosher meat, no meat and milk mixture, all those things. But who, when they go out to restaurants in the world, have a slightly less, um, let's say, uh, you know, strict adherence to the laws of, of kashrut that they have in their home. And so when thinking about it in those ways, uh, you know, being able to eat in a restaurant in which you are largely assured that you know what the meat is going to be, and you know that it is not going to be mixed with milk, is both, again, geographically convenient and convenient within this very interesting subset of how to remain sort of, on the one hand, one foot in our traditions, one foot in strict kashrut, in our homes, in our communities, and yet sort of dipping our toe, dabbling inside a world of, you know, what they called, in this case, safe trafe, right? Meaning, you know, things that they could sort of feel comfortable with that were not necessarily towing the traditional line. And so, of course, as I was saying before, this may seem like a sort of, you know, trite conversation, but it's actually quite significant because it speaks to, again, what has always been part of our conversation living in diaspora, as I said, which is about how much to hold on to tradition and how much to become a part of the things that are going on in the community around us. Uh, those that traveled with me, for example, to Israel uh, with, with my dad many years ago and know the programs that he runs, traveling all over the world and vid visiting Jewish communities that have lived in Greece and in Morocco and Portugal and Spain and Turkey and Eastern Europe, in India, right? All of these different places. You see this story play out over and over and over again. It's not this story. It's not Chinese food on Christmas by any means, right? But it's the example of how... You know, we tend to paint our experience in diaspora as being one in which we uh, were forced into a corner in which we only did our stuff, in which we are only part of our community, in which we had no interaction whatsoever with the outside world. But largely speaking, that wasn't the case. We still obviously held on to our traditions. We wouldn't be talking tonight if that hadn't been the case. But there was always a permeability. There was always an interaction with the communities in which we lived. And trying to find a way of striking a balance between, again, honoring of our traditions and at the same time being a part of this sort of larger world. So how do we get then to the, you know, celebration of Christmas through Chinese food? We're obviously, especially in the early days, of, you know, the you know, 1900s, uh, really through, you know, more modern times. It's not necessarily that we were trying to, uh, to create a Christmas for ourselves, so to speak, right? But that we were trying to say, okay, well, we're not going to celebrate in that way. But we're going to make sure that we're not just locking ourselves up 
in our rooms, right? We're not just going to close the shades and let this day pass and then come back into the world. That we also need to somehow identify with and connect with this other experience that's going on. And for the early part of the years where it was harder to do that, where we were less accepted and we were less part of the larger milieu, looking for other communities who were in a similar kind of situation made a lot of sense, right? That immigrant communities, again, building a sense of sort of shared identity in their otherness made a lot of sense in those days. But today, right, as we're experiencing it now, it's not just about eating Chinese food on Christmas, right? That many, many, many uh, examples, as you will see, uh, of, for example, this, this author, this uh, grandson, great-grandson of one of the great rabbis of, uh, of American Judaism, right, who writes an entire book about his experiences as a child, on the one hand, being in a, you know, completely Jewish household, completely Jewish parentage and lineage, and at the same time, understanding that there is all this wonderful stuff going on out in the world that he wants to sort of be a part of and trying to strike the balance between these kinds of things. You know, in the similar story, right, my, my father is the son of a conservative rabbi, basically an Orthodox rabbi. One of the things he always wanted to do was to see the Rockettes. You know, I should have, all those years ago, if I could have introduced him to Bruce Michael, right, we would have gotten better seats, right? But one of the great highlights was that him, my sister took him to see the Rockettes at Radio City Music Hall. So what is this really all about? It's not a giving up of, of our identity by any means, right? And it's not a, 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 an attempt, I don't think, to fit in, right, or to look like everybody else. But it's at the same time, I think, actually a demonstration of a confidence, right, an assurance in ourselves and in our own identity to say, we can, you know, go see the Rockettes. We can watch a Christmas story on 24 hours of it on TBS. Right, we can have in some cases, right, the things that remind us of the holiday without giving ourselves over to it either. That it's really about actually trying to find a um, a balance in a way in which we are ourselves and we are a part of something that is beyond ourselves as well. Um, and this can be a point of contention, right? In families, in particular, I know, you know, growing up where there was always something of an anxiety around this time of year, right? It's I always forget what the technical term for it was, right? The December dilemma, I think, is what they called it. Uh, but I think that's a fictional dilemma. It's a creation, right? At this point in time, for most of us, we may have family, we may have friends, right? We may have lots of people that we know in our community. We may share a space, as we have done with the church, right, in which we are interacting with our friends and our relatives and our neighbors, and we are understanding them, and I think in the same process, understanding us, right? Our co-president, Ron, did something brilliant, for example. He invited uh, Pastor Linda, who is the pastor of the Whalers Church, to come to our Hanukkah celebration, okay? These kinds of things should not be taken for granted, and these are the kinds of things that 50 years ago, 100 years ago, you know, 1,000 years ago, we would never have thought of, right? would have seemed impossible, and in some cases are still thought of in this day and age as being negative. Uh, I, I choose not to, to go that route, and I've come a long way in my thinking on it, Largely because I, I think if you study again Jewish history and Jewish history in diaspora, um, that it's never been the case, it, and it shouldn't be the case, that we live an insular life, that we live a life completely cut off from the people around us, that the only way to preserve our identity is to build a wall around it. Um, those are, to me, our, our self-defeating principles. Um, I think the key thing for us is to be core in our identity and to celebrate our identity and to enjoy the things that we enjoy and to eat, you know, Chinese food on Christmas if that's what you desire, whatever it may be that you decide to do. Um, but, you know, to do it in a place of, again, an internal confidence of who we are, what our community is about, what our families are about, what our values are about, and what ultimately our religion is about. And to be respectful of the fact, as I said, that while there is a secular aspect to Christmas, there is also a very important religious aspect to it as well. So I think the only caution I would say is for us to be very careful that we don't go overboard in trying to make what is actually a religious holiday into something uh, entirely secular, something that we can co-opt. It, it can't be that, right? We have to be respectful, I think, also of the symbols and of the rituals and of the things that are done. But I think it's really very important also that we not create a sense of alienation within ourselves to create what I think is really an artificial debate uh, that has been raging for many years. And I would say that I haven't had a chance to read this book fully, uh, but again, if you are interested in reading it, it really is quite a, a fascinating history. And this, this man has devoted himself to learning all of the ins and outs of this one particular story. Uh, again, it's Joshua Eli Plout, Rabbi Joshua Eli Plout, writing A Kosher Christmas, Tis the Season to be Jewish, which has a foreword by Jonathan Sarna. So if you, you know, if you don't know who Jonathan Sarna is, you should look him up. But if you get a foreword from him, generally speaking, 
you can assume that this is a legit book and that it has some really interesting pieces of our unique American history. So with that, again, whether you have a, you know, sesame chicken in hand for as soon as we're done at the Oneg or not, um, I hope that, uh, that some of this has given us a little bit of, of fruit for thought. And, um, and again, for those that are celebrating, those that may have family members who are celebrating, uh, we wish you with full heart and with full sincerity, even on our Shabbat, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And may it be, you know, one in which the principal ideas of the holidays, I understand it, are ones that resonate for us as well, right? Celebration of family, celebration of, uh, of giving meaningfully, of uh, certainly food, that plays a big role, and of community. Uh, and these are things that I think all of us can certainly celebrate. So with that, again, I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. And uh, we're going to turn now back in our prayer books to page 586. This is an odd transition to a very particular prayer. Uh, but Aleinu is, uh, is one that is really quite, quite ours. But, um, but in any case, we will turn to page 586. Uh, and uh, we will sing together Aleinu Le Shabbat towards the bottom of the page. Aleinu le Shabbat l'adon hakol l'atet kedula liotzer breshit shelo asanu kegoye haratzot velo samanu kemishpechot adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vegor aleinu kechol hamonaham vanachnu korim umishtachavim umodim lifnei melech malche hamlachim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're turning now to page 591. We'll now turn to page 598 as we prepare to offer our mourners Kaddish for this evening. We'll begin by thinking of those in our community who have passed in recent months. Dr. John Aberkin, Sylvia Alderman, Morris Dickstein, Linda Danath, Ellen Frank, Sandra Furman, Evelyn Gelb, Arthur Grossman, Gerald Hirsch, Deirdre Klein, Jeanette Kopp, Leo Leibowitz, William Lippman, Audrey Lubo, Morty Lynn, Jerry Monroe, Nancy Nagel, Harry Olstein, Geraldine Rosen, Harriet Roth, Jeannie Rubin, Howard Schreier, Dorothy Shupnik, Paul Silver, Marlise Silverberg, Blanche Sklar, Rita Sandra Snyder, Joan Strong Tangzilius, and Virginia Tizer. We also mark the yard sites that occurred during the last week for Miriam de Rothschild, Fred Eber, Lago Galston, Thomas Nash Glynn, Beatrice Gruber, Sylvia Honig, Ruth Kahn, Rose Kaplovitz, Bertha Karp, Rain Kelman, Victor Kessler, Vera Lee, Raymond Leven, Emily Levy, Bob Matlick, Barry Metzger, Morris Peskowitz, Phil Rosenstein, Amy Elizabeth Shapiro, Meyer Jacob Simon, Philip Spiegel, Arnold Spitz, Andrew Strasser, and Nat Zimmer. In addition to the names that we just mentioned, if you have names uh, and you're on the Zoom, you'd like to add them in the chat, you're welcome to do so. Uh, for those that are at home, you're welcome to mention names out loud or hold them in your hearts. And I'll invite the mourners to join with me on page 598 as we recite the mourners' Kaddish together. Yitkadal v'yitkadash sheme rabba ve'alma divrach yirutei v'yamlich machutei v'chayichon v'yomechon v'chayei d'chol beit Yisrael v'agalav v'zman kari v'imru amen. Yehe Shame Rabba Mebarach Le Alam Li Alme Al Maya. Eat Barach Vit Tabach Vit Paar Vit Ramam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Alevi Talal Shame de Kudsha Brihu. Le Lam in Kol Birchata Veshirata Tushbechata Venechamata. Dami Ran Be Alma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shalama Rabba Min Shemaya Vechaim Alenu Ve Al Kol Israel Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bim Ramav Huya Se Shalom Alenu Ve Al Kol Israel. Vimru. Amen. Zichronam livracha. May every one of their memories be for a blessing. Okay, if you're uh, standing at home, you can be seated. And again, uh, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. A uh, few announcements to share. Uh, first is to join us uh, and Cantor Lauren and myself for Shabbat morning services tomorrow. Those will be live streamed only, not on the Zoom, beginning at 9.30. 
Uh, and again, uh, this is not in-person, no in-person services for this Shabbat. And also, while I'm at it, to mention for next Shabbat as well, we'll see about the future. We have to talk a little bit about, you know, that. Uh, but certainly for the next two weeks, we know we'll be virtual only in both cases. So next Friday night, you can join us on the Zoom again. Uh, but services tomorrow, 9.30. Torah study will begin at 12 o'clock on Zoom as well. Uh, this Sunday, the Social Justice Committee will be supporting Maureen's Haven, our uh, local homeless shelter. You can help by signing up for needed items on the Social Justice Committee's page on our website. Uh, and if you're interested in joining the Social Justice Committee, I believe that Alyssa Peak is on our call tonight. For those that are on the Zoom, you can uh, chat with her and let her know that you're interested in joining up. Otherwise, call Eileen in the office and she will be happy to connect you with either Alyssa or Andy. Uh, on Monday, the Mitzvah will be meeting at 11.30 a.m. Social Justice Committee will have its regular meeting at 5 o'clock. There is no Hebrew school this week because of winter recess for school. Uh, my class on Heschel and the Prophets will resume at 12 o'clock on Wednesday. My uh, class on the Sidur is Fridays at 9.15. Uh, and a reminder again, please do uh, pay attention to our January calendar. One thing to highlight especially is um, a special treat we have coming up on January 9th in the weekend of leading up to. Uh, normally we do our women's Torah commentary Shabbats on the first Shabbat of the month. For various reasons we are doing it on the second Shabbat this month. Uh, we will still have our regular women's Torah commentary Shabbat, this time facilitated by Leah Oppenheimer, on Saturday, January 8th. But on January 9th, Sunday, from 11 to 1 o'clock, we're very honored uh, to have one of our own, one of the great teachers that our temple has produced uh, and that has uh, come back to teach us many times over the years, Rabbi Minna Bromberg, who will be joining us from Israel, and she will be focusing on Parshat Bo and uh, using the Women's Torah Commentary and her unique background also in her world uh, of music and focusing on the song uh, At the Sea, which uh, really should be an amazing opportunity for learning Again, this is open to anyone and everyone that you would like. You can bring friends. It's on Zoom, 11 to 1 o'clock, Sunday, uh, January 9th. If you have any questions, you can certainly let me know. I'll be happy to let you know about that. Uh, also, a reminder that somewhere in January, I believe it's January 12th, Cantor Lauren, we'll bring her back up on the stage so we can talk about it, uh, has her practicum at uh, HUC, uh, which is a really big moment. We hope that it will be in person, but we may suspect not. Uh, but in any case... I believe Cantor Lauren's going to help us by providing us with a Vimeo link to watch along. Uh, and as always, right, our student cantors are a big part of who we are as a community. We like to show up and support them whenever possible. Uh, so Cantor Lauren, I'm sure, would be very happy to know if you are able to watch and participate. Uh, and for those that can't, but Lauren, could you just tell us again what time it would be? And, and, uh, and then we'll send out the details for it a little bit later. Yeah, so um, the program officially starts at 1030. It's on a Wednesday and it goes till about... 12 o'clock, there'll be one person um, giving uh, their practicum before me. And so I'll start at around, give or take 11. Um, and it's about 30 minutes. So not until 12. That was bad math. There's a reason why we're rabbis and cantors, people. Exactly. Math is not our structure. My class <laughs> ends at 12 o'clock, but the exactly. stream will end at 1130. And, uh, and while we have the opportunity, you know, I, I don't know if he's in front of his screen or not, but let's... Um... Yeah, let's let's bring him over. Let's just also again congratulate Lauren and Aaron on their engagement. You know, we got to do it in in the sanctuary, you know, a few weeks ago. But yeah, there he is. <laughs> Very exciting news. We got a little time before the you know the deal is done, but we we know you are on to great 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 things, and we celebrate you both, and we wish you a muzzle tov and uh, really good work. Very good work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, you know, again, this was a real wonderful treat to be back on, to see all of your faces and to be a part of this. And, of course, anybody who's on the Zoom when we're done with our service, you're welcome to stick around for a little kibitzing afterwards. Um, and as I said, pay close attention to what happens in January. You know, obviously, with COVID being what it is, we're always going to put safety first. Uh, so, you know, our leadership hasn't had a chance to really discuss things yet. But, you know, just be prepared and keep a close eye to announcements. Make sure that you know what's happening and where and how. Uh, so, Cantor, I think uh, we're going to have a closing prayer tonight before Kiddush, and yes. I believe it's Eve Duet Adonai B'Simcha, which yeah. seems very appropriate for tonight. So, uh, do we have a page for that? Yes, it is on the very bottom of page 644. 644. Eve Adonai Eve Fana birnana, fana birnana. Eve to et taronai besimcha, Eve to et taronai besimcha. Oh, fana birnana, fana birnana. Do it, I don't know.
So I have to ask one quick question before we do Kiddush. Um, th is that written by Moshe Shore, Rabbi Moshe Shore? That okay? So I'm right. So just to give a shout out to somebody who deserves it, uh, creates a what? lot of wonderful Jewish music. Uh, happens to also be a dear friend of the family, and actually, for those that have seen this before, this famous picture that I have in my household of my father, who's over here, looks kind of like Eli Manning, oddly enough. Uh, and this is Rabbi Moshe Shore before he was a rabbi, and of course you recognize Dr. King as well. So these two guys, you know, in the end, uh, quite affected by this experience, but Moshe Shore, really some really wonderful Jewish music. So if you ever get a chance, look him up. Maybe one day we'll bring him out uh, and do some stuff with him. But I just want to make sure. I never give him credit where it's due, so I want to make sure I did it tonight. Uh, Cantor, you did an amazing job, as always. Uh, this was really a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to join together for Kiddush now on page 123. If you've got a, a cup, you are welcome to join with me. And um, let's take Lauren off there. Okay. Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bohorei Perhi HaGahafen Baruch HaTadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'Mitzvotav V'Ratzavahanu V'Shabbat Kotcho B'Ahava U'Vratzon Inchilahanu Zikaron Lemahase V'Reshit Ki Huyom Techila L'Mikrae Kodesh Zeche L'Tziyat Mitzrayim Ki vahanu vachata, veotanu ki dashta, miko hohamim, veshabahat kochecha, veahava huvrat zonin chatanu, baruchata donai, mekahade shashabat. Amen. L'chaim, everybody. Good and Shabbos, as they say. So we'll say goodnight to our friends watching on the stream for now. Anybody who's on the Zoom, you are welcome to hang around.